Hey guys, we are going to tackle this last section of the 5-1 through 5-3 grouping. Um, the good news is this is actually review. We're going to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. But adding and subtracting really just boils down to combining like terms. You've already done that. Um, you don't change the exponents because if you have 3x squared plus 2x squared, you just have 5x squared. It doesn't change the powers at all. So the only thing that makes it confusing is we did learn all those power rules and you just have to kind of keep everything straight. So here's an example. And what I do when it's positive or plus in between, you don't have a lot to worry about. You just start looking for the highest power. So for example, this is a 2x cubed, so I look for any others, and this is a 1, and they're getting added, so 2 plus 1 is 3. Shocker. Then I'm going to go, and then sometimes I cross off what I've used so I don't get confused and use it again. Then I go looking for the 5, um, in this case it's a negative 5x squared. This one has plus 6, so negative 5 plus 6 leaves you with just one of them. And then... Now I move on to the next thing, which is um, x plain x's. I have a 3x here, and then there aren't any others. So I just get a 3x in my answer. I don't change that part. And then the last thing it looks to have is the constants or the regular numbers. And negative 9 plus 11, just like it always has been, will turn out to be a 2. So when you're done, you just want your powers to go from highest to lowest, and you shouldn't have any repeat powers because then they could have been combined. So like mine go three, two, one, and then a constant meaning, no power of X. Now, definitely with subtraction, there's a danger. Um, the ACT loves these because kids make mistakes real easily on this. Think of this as like being a negative one. It distributes to everything. So it's gonna change all the signs after it. If they were minus, they changed to plus. If they were plus, they changed to minus. I usually do that first. So I would just rewrite this. Negative times a negative here turns positive. Negative times a negative here turns positive. And negative times this negative turns positive. And then I'm replacing my original problem with the problem, but that negative has been, or subtraction has been distributed. Now I can treat it like the problem up above and be like, there's the next cubed. Here's an x cubed. 3 minus 8 is negative 5x cubed. Then I have a 2x squared plus a 1x squared, so 3x squared. Then I look to see if there's a plain x, and there is one over here. There just wasn't one in the front. But since I'm going down by powers, I want to make sure I have all of them. And then lastly is my numbers. And it looks like here... And here are my two constants. So negative 10 plus 1 would be negative 9. And again, my powers go down from 3, 2, 1, none. Okay, so really the catch on that is distributing the negative. That's the thing that makes it different. Um, and then you can kind of treat it just like you did the addition. But you just have to be careful of that subtraction because that does catch people. Now, we have been multiplying... Um, polynomials a lot but it just looks a little different here because you can't just foil everything here you're going to end up having to do double distributing but keep in mind here when you take a y times a y squared you actually add the powers and it turns into a y to the third so here you keep in mind that your powers actually change so now the powers will change and then when you go to combine like terms, they won't. That's really messy. But when you're multiplying, the powers will change. Keep in mind that in multiplication, they will get added to each other. Okay, so let's just do one thing at a time. So I'm going to distribute this y. So y times 5y squared turns into 5y cubed because this is one more. Here, I'll end up with 3 and then y times y becomes y squared. Here I have a negative 6, and now it's multiplied by a y. I like to go and do the next one as a second row. You can just keep going, but I will go like negative 2 times 5y squared is going to be a negative 10y squared, and I just line it up under the other y squared. 
so that it'll make my life easier later. Negative 2 times 3y is negative 6y. And then negative 2 times negative 6 is a 12. And that way, it's easier for me to find my like terms because they're just in these columns. You do not have to do that. You can just write it as one long string and then find the, the like terms. So here, the 5 y to the cubed is the only y cube I have. In the second column, 3 minus 10 is negative 7y squared. And at this point, I am not changing the signs because I'm just combining like terms. Don't cross these off. It's really tempting, but I have a negative 6 minus 6 more, so they don't cancel. They become negative 12. And then I just have the number 12 at the end. So here is my final answer for that. This is hideous. Um, you can kind of do, just like if you took two times three times five, you can either multiply these and then times that and get 30, or you could have done this and then times that and get 30. So it doesn't matter kind of how you group them or what order you want to do them in. Um, I am going to actually go ahead and foil these two because neither one has a number in front. And then I'll end up doing that double distributing that we just did. So first let's foil x times x, x squared. Outside, minus 3x. Inside, plus 2x. Last terms, a positive 2 times a negative 3 is negative 6. So these go together because they're alike. So negative 3x's plus 2 will leave me with the minus 1. And then at that point, I still need to multiply that answer by this 2x minus 7. So now it kind of becomes the same process as we did in the previous problem. So I'm going to multiply my 2x times every term, and that's going to get me a 2x cubed. Here I'll get minus 2x squared. Here I'll get minus 12x. Then if I go through and distribute my negative 7, I'll have negative 7x squared. Here the negatives cancel and become positive 7x. And then here I get a negative times a negative, which turns positive. And then again, I do it this way just so I can line these up. And I can say, okay, I only have this 2x cubed. Nothing combines with it minus 2x squared minus 7 more is negative 9x squared. Negative 12 plus 7 makes negative 5x's, and then the 42 is just kind of chilling on its own, so it stays 42. All right, so this is just about how this is written because what kids will do is distribute that square, but you can't because of that minus sign. So you have to, what squaring means is multiply by itself. You have to take this and multiply it by itself. So this is a FOIL problem, and the difference maker is having that plus or minus in between the 4x and the 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and FOIL it. So first will be 16x squared. Outside will be minus 12x. Inside is another minus 12x. Those do not cancel because they're both negative. And here the negatives cancel into a plus 9. So even though these didn't cancel, they will combine. So minus 12 minus 12 more puts me at negative 24 X's and then plus nine. Please, that got really giant, sorry about that. All right, last, this one is just kind of demonstrating the same concept because here it's saying cubed. Well, that means something times itself three times. So this is sort of, again, like the problem above it and that I can FOIL two of the three. So I'll get x squared plus 5x on the outside plus 5x on the inside numbers and then five times five puts a 25 at the end. These two go together And this is my FOIL result, but I have another x plus 5 to multiply it by. And so now I'll do that double distributing. Everything times x, x cubed, 10x times x, x squared, 
25 times x becomes 25x. Then 5 times each part, 5 times x squared goes here. 5 times 10x in the middle goes here. And then 5 times 25 goes at the end. And then I can look at them in these columns and say, okay, now I can combine like terms. I have an x cubed. Here I have 15x squareds and 75 x's and 125. So this is actually a skill we did in Algebra 1. You repeated it here. Probably didn't do a ton of it in geometry, so it's good to refresh your memory. But it's not tied directly to this graph analysis that we did in 5.2. That's really going to be the doozy because that's the new material. So good luck, be amazing. And um, I did make a video to go through the 5.1 to 5.3 review worksheet. I made it last year, but it's still right. So if you want to watch that, you certainly can. And that way you'll be better prepared for the quiz. Good luck, guys.